My name is Chris McPeak. I work as the Director of Operations at the Pasadena City College Foundation. Our office is in the C building um, next door and this workshop is going to talk to you a little bit about how to access our scholarship applications so that you can try to access funds to help you pay for school. The Pasadena City College Foundation is part of the college and yet not part of the college. We're sort of a subsidiary organization. We're a 503C nonprofit organization and the main reason that we're here is to um, establish, uh, uh, bridge the gap between the needs and resources of PCC and we're a small woman office. Um, I'm the director of operations so basically my job is to run the office so that Bobby Abram who is my boss, can go out and raise money. We have an administrative support person. Her name is Peggy Brickert, so that would have been the woman that you spoke with in our office earlier today. What we do is raise funds for the college, manage funds for the college, and distribute funds for the college. We raise funds through the President's Circle, which is um, unrestricted giving, and that's basically an appeal to the community saying, if you are a fan of PCC and you appreciate higher education, Give us some money so that we can do good work for the school. Endowments come in the form of, endowments and plan gifts come in the form of folks who are either leaving money to the college um, for their will or their estate, or they have enough money to give that they can create an endowment, which is a gift of $50,000 or more. Endowments are invested, and then the, the interest from that money is what's used to provide either an agency fund or a scholarship. And the majority of our scholarships are endowed funds that have been given to the, to the college over time. Planned giving, as I said, is when folks consider their will or their estate, and they leave a portion of that to the college. We manage funds for the college by taking these donations, these endowments, these planned gifts, and we work with an investment fund who decides the best course of action for how to get those funds to make money. Um, so we have an off-campus investment firm that works with us and uh, makes suggestions on which funds to invest in and how aggressive or not aggressive to be with our investing. And then we distribute funds for the college. A lot of those funds will just sit in the office until the departments they're connected with access them. But in the case of scholarship money, we give that money away every single year. Um, we have a fall scholarship process, which is what you all are here to talk about today, and we have about $300,000 of interest that comes from these endowed funds that we give away in the form of scholarships. So at an average of about $1,000 per scholarship, that's 300 students who may receive awards this fall. We also give away um, faculty grants to um, programs on the college. Um, where maybe there's an initiative that isn't funded by a department budget and we can help those faculty members um, meet those needs in the classroom. So a myth out there is that you have to be a super smarty pants person to get a scholarship and I'm here to tell you that is not the case. Um, scholarships are governed by their donors so the people that are giving us the money for a scholarship endowment, they have specific needs or goals that they have for who that scholarship should go to. And they're not always to students with high GPAs. Some folks have created scholarship endowments that are meant just for students that are in the nursing program. There are some that were created back in um, the 20s and 30s that were meant to encourage students of color to come to college. So um, while there are scholarships that are merit-based and require a high GPA, I would say that that's the um, minority of our scholarships as opposed to the majority of them. So I want you to get out of your head the notion that you have to have a high GPA to be a scholarship recipient. Um, there are scholarships out there for all students. Okay, so we're gonna talk a little bit about how you do the application, and it's pretty simple this year because we have changed the way that Academic Works pulls your information. Um, you'll need personal information, you'll need a little bit of academic information, and you'll need your personal statement and possibly letters of recommendation. Not all of our scholarship opportunities require letters, but some of them do, and we'll talk about that a little bit in a second. With regards to the personal information, you need to know your student number um, and we'll ask you for a phone number and your email address. And then demographic information, we don't ask for that, but some of it is pulled by Banner in Lancer Point um, because there are some scholarships that are connected with these demographics. Although I will tell you that Title IV 
precludes us from um, requiring any protected class information in the scholarship. So a donor from the 1930s may have said, we want this scholarship to go to all women who are vocational education majors. Well, if you're a fella and you're a vocational education major, you might think, well, I can't apply for that scholarship. And that's not true. You still can apply for that scholarship, but the donor had originally wanted for that to go to a female student. Um, anymore, we cannot preclude people from applying to scholarships based on class protected um, issues. Okay, most of your academic information will pull directly from Banner, which is such a godsend for us this year because last year I had to validate all of these credit hours and all of these GPAs and it was a lot of work. We are connected directly with Lancer Point now, so the system will import all of this information and that saves you guys some time because now you don't have to go digging around for that information. You don't have to do the math and think like, oh, well, I got a 4.0 when I was at Glendale and I have a 3.5 here, so what does that average out to be, blah, blah, blah. Um, we pull all of these, all of these things. Actually, the academic objective and the transfer destination won't pull because Lancer Point doesn't necessarily know that yet, so we do ask you those questions. We have a couple scholarship opportunities that are designated for students intending to transfer, although we do give you the money while you're here. We do want to know also about support services that you receive, and you have the opportunity to say if you're a CalWORK student or if you're in Puente or Ujima, any of those organizations. The other thing that we pull is your estimated family contribution from FAFSA. We have some scholarships that are meant to be need-based based specifically, so if we know what your estimated family contribution is, we can use that when determining the award amount that you should get if it's not dictated by the uh, governing documents. Okay, then this is an opportunity to do some really good bragging on all of the clubs and organizations and extracurricular inv uh, involvement that you have on campus or outside of campus. We want to know about your honors and awards. And you can go back to high school. So I received the health award my senior year in high school, and that went on every single scholarship application I ever applied for. We want to know about those things. What kind of academic honors have you received? We also want to know if you were athlete of the year at your high school, or if you were PCC athlete of the month here at Pasadena City College. We want to know those things. So you have the opportunity to fill those items in. Clubs, organizations, campus activities, and community service. What things do you do at PCC when you're not in the classroom? Are you in the Star Trek Club? Are you part of the um, math and uh, calculus club? Um, are you an athlete? Do you play on an intramural team? Those types of things. So we want to know about your extracurricular involvement here at PCC. In addition to that, we want to know what you do out in the community and when you're not on the Pasadena City College campus. Are you active with your church? Do you walk dogs on, during your free time? Do you babysit? Are you a weekend nanny? Um, are you a caregiver for a family member? Um, do you volunteer at a food bank or a, um, a soup kitchen? Those types of things. We want to know everything that you're doing when you're not doing something academic at PCC. And this is not the time to hold back. We want to know about everything. The more that you write about your outside the classroom experience, the higher point score that you get in that arena. Yes, sir. Internships fall under yes, yes. And actually, this slide doesn't reflect but employment, too. We know a lot of you work, and not just to pay for school, but to help your family out as well. So if you work at Starbucks, or if you work at Target, or if you, um, you know, bus tables at the, what is that cafe down the road? Um, anyway, if you bus tables at a local cafe, we want to know those types of things too. Okay, we did not present this information last year because we hadn't figured it out yet. This year we know exactly how we plan to evaluate students and we think it's only fair that you guys know. This is what reviewers are looking for when they're reading your application. Your personal statement is super, super important. That receives a 20 point scale value um, from the reviewers. We want to know, we want to see a high level of persuasion authenticity and credibility. So we want that statement to feel like it's you. We want to know that you're reading, that we're reading about you and who you are as a person and where you come from. We want to see strong examples of career aspirations, how you overcome adversity, and faced your challenges.
Spelling, grammar, sentence structure should be of high quality. So a personal statement that looks like that is going to receive up to 20 points. Lesser points if you're not as authentic or credible in your writing. Um, and fewer points as well if there are grammatical or spelling errors. So any type of professional writing that you're doing, and this would be considered professional writing, you always want to make sure that you're doing spell check and grammar check and the whole nine yards. You can type your personal statement in a Word document and do all of that spell check and grammar check and then copy and paste your personal statement into the application. Um, so definitely make sure you pay attention to that. Your grade point average does receive points as well. So even though there are scholarships that aren't merit-based, it is part of our ranking system. So the higher your GPA, the higher your, your initial score will be. And we do that on a sliding scale. So someone with the 4.0 GPA is going to receive the full 20 points. And then it's a sliding scale on the way down. And then finally, the outside of the classroom experience receives up to 10 points. So going back to this slide, where we talked about extracurricular activities, that's going to be rated by the reviewers up to 10 points. Highly rated outside the classroom experiences will include between four to six honors, clubs, organizations, or off-campus activities. That's why I shared with you earlier, it's really important to tell us everything that you do when you are not in the classroom at PCC. Now, I would not list, like if you're like me, I like to go to the movies, but that's really an activity that I do for myself. It's not really a volunteer or a church activity. So if you write down, I see between five to 10 movies every week. Don't write that stuff down because that doesn't help you. That just shows you're an avid moviegoer. Everybody feeling okay right now? Okay. And I have handouts that I'll give to you guys, too, before you leave, so you can take this information home with you. Um, so let's say you are awarded a scholarship, and the next logical question to ask is, well, when do I get my money? How do I get my money? If you are a scholarship recipient, you'll be notified around the first week of November, and you'll receive an invitation to come to our scholarship reception, which is on Wednesday, December 3rd. That is the week before final exams. This year, we are going to be at the Pasadena Hilton on South Los Robles Avenue. Um, when, this, when the reception's over, and it's really nice, we, we do formal presentations for every single scholarship that we give away. There are certificates. You get your picture taken with a donor or with an administrator. We have cookies and punch and hot cocoa, and it's very fun and very festive and a chance to get dressed up and have your family and your friends come with you. Um, we had a really wonderful time at this party last year. Um, after the celebration, you're required to upload a thank you letter and academic works that we then submit to the donor after the fact, but you can do that all electronically. It's very simple. And there's some questions that are part of our post-acceptance questionnaire. We ask you about your experience in academic works, and we ask you to provide any testimonial information um, that we might use in scholarship brochures in the future. Then what will happen is that you'll get two disbursements of your money. So let's say you're awarded $1,000. You will get a $500 disbursement within seven to 10 days of the scholarship ceremony. You'll get that second distribution of $500 at the beginning of the spring semester. The reason that we do this is we want to make sure that you are using your funding while you're still at PCC. And being enrolled in the spring semester is, is important to receiving your full scholarship award. So if you're a student who has one more semester left in, in in school here at PCC, it's possible that you only get one half of your scholarship amount because we want to know that everybody is staying in classes, so we'll validate that. Um, your money is processed within Lancer Point. So when you, when you log into Lancer Point and you look at your student account, it shows you there, this is your financial aid that's, that's applied. Some of you may already have scholarships that have applied. Um, and then the, the account looks at any outstanding funds that you owe the school. So if you haven't paid your tuition bill for spring, or if you still owe that $24 fee for health and activities and that type of thing, any money that you still owe the college will be deducted from your scholarship award. And then the balance of that award is processed to you in the form of a check. And this part takes a little long. <laughs> it was not up to me the way we do it. But um, the checks are entered by the financial aid department. A disbursement report is run on a Tuesday morning at 10 o'clock. The funds go to the county, LA County, and they're processed by Pasadena City College, Pasadena Community College District, mailed back to the school, and the school mails them to your home address. That process takes approximately seven to 10 days. So if 
I enter, if I get all those scholarships entered the week of the party, you'll get your check at your home address within 10 days. If you don't, it's important that you follow up so that we figure out if that check went to the right address. And it's always good to make sure that the proper information is in Lancer Point as to where your home address is. If you used to live at home and now you have an apartment, make sure that you're getting your mail from the college where you get your mail where you live. That's really important. Um, and sometimes I know family members do open mail and take checks and deposit them so we want to know that you physically got your check um, so if you don't have your money 10 days after the party it's important that you come to the foundation office and let me know if is academic works the only resource for getting scholarships and that's actually not the case it's the only resource for foundation scholarships but there are lots of other state local and national programs um, and I found a handful of these um, that were shared with me some of them are kind of funny scholarshipmonkey.com this is California Scholarship Federation so that's a state program um, I also recommend that you go to Google and you put in certain demographics uh, you know where you come from and and, and what you do. Um, so for example, there was a student that came to me last year who was a single mom and she was a returning student. So she was in her mid thirties and she wanted to know if there were scholarships that she qualified for. And I suggested that she go to Google and, and put in single moms scholarships um, and see if there are programs out there because there are a lot of local philanthropists that sometimes have money to give away um, and you know an hour of Google research could pay off in spades for you if you are willing to do the writing that, that goes along with it but I encourage you to take advantage of those opportunities when they exist but the other thing and there's a really great US News and World Report article because there are scams out there there are companies that want you to pay $29.95 and they say that they'll open up your world to a, a huge scholarship database that you can only get if you pay for and then you never get anything so you have to be careful um, of scholarship scams but these all of these are reputable resources that you can check out if you're looking for additional scholarship funds okay this used to be how you would sign in to academic works um, it was the home page of pasadena.academicworks.com and if you want to go ahead and open your web browser and go to that web address I want you to go to pasadena.academicworks.com and what you should see now is this screen after you click on sign in what you probably see first is a lot of different opportunities Alexander Family Scholarship Ashley Fund Raise your hand if you are at this page. Welcome, please note, we have changed sign the way. In. Yeah, there's a red tab that says sign in and then you should be right here. Okay. There's two tabs and I'm gonna walk over to this side real fast. There's applicants and administrators and then references and reviewers. You wanna be on applicants and administrators. And then when I do this training next week for all our scholarship reviewers, we put them on another tab. Pasadena.academicworks.com And there's no www in front of it. Just Pasadena.academicworks.com Now a very cool thing that the IT staff did in collaboration with the staff at Academic Works was to do this LDAP single sign-on and it's all IT speak that I don't understand, but they were able to figure out a way for you to not have to remember another username and not have to remember another password. So you should be able to log in right now, just as you are as a student. So login is your Pasadena Lancer Point login, and then the password is your Lancer Point password. And that should get you directly to the application. and raise your hand if you're not there. So you should see that there's very little pieces of information that you need to that you need to add. The bulk of the application for you guys at this stage is going to be well, I mean, we want you to, you know, if you are a single parent, if you do have 
dependent children. Um, if you do plan to transfer, where you think you want to transfer. So there's still a little bit of, of question answering that you have to do. But then if you scroll down, you will see the section where your honors and awards are entered, your extracurricular activities, and your community service, employment, internship, volunteer work, church activities, etc. You should see that there is a box for your 500 word personal statement. And we're going to talk here about personal statements, I think. Yes, that's the next thing we're going to chat about. OK, you saw earlier that your personal statement is worth 20 points out of 50 points. So almost half of your, of your reviewer score is based on the personal statement. This is the time and the place to tell us your story. We want to know who you are. We want to know where you've been. We want to know what you want to be when you grow up. Um, and y you're thinking, how am I going to do all that in 500 words? And why 500 words anyway, McPeak? What is that all about? Um, pick a topic that you're passionate about. So let's say that when you grow up, you want to be a veterinarian. And you've known this since you're five years old. I want to be a veterinarian. My whole life, I've decided I wanted to be a veterinarian. Well. Talk to us a little bit about why that is. Do you just, just always loved animals? Did you have a dog that you lost as a young person and that experience stayed with you? Um, did you have a family member that um, took you to volunteer at an animal shelter and that experience changed your life dramatically? Maybe, um, maybe when you were younger, you were really, really good at math and a grade school teacher told you that you should think about being an engineer and somehow that stuck with you. So we want you to write about those things. So what is it that you're passionate about and why is that important to you? Um, engaging your readers from the first sentence. So this is where you really want to put your creative imagination juices to work on the, on the paper. And what is something that you can write that is going to get the reviewers thinking like, wow, this student really has it on the ball. Um, and if you don't think that you're a strong writer, don't worry about that because it's not as important being a flowery superstar writer as it is um, engaging us in what it is about your story that's important. And you have resources. There is a writing center next door in the C building and you can go talk to those writing coaches about how to make this personal statement really, really pop for you. Um, the third question I think is really, really important. When you think about your experience and your life and the way that you are putting that into your 500 word personal statement, so what? Why is that important? Why are you special? Why are you unique? And this is not to say that you need to be super, super humble, but um, it's really important that you be able to justify what's important about your personal statement that would give a reviewer cause to say, I really want this student to get a scholarship. They really deserve this money. They've worked really, really hard. Um, so writing something down to prove to yourself that you've done a really, really great job. Go back and read your statement and then look at it and say, would I give me money? <laughs> and you have to be able to say yes to that question. So asking yourself, so what? Reviewers want to know how you've grown as a person and how the experiences that you are talking about have changed you. It's not enough to say, I'm a people person and I'm a strong leader and that's why I want to be a doctor. It's not enough to say, I come from a poor family and I have no money to pay for school. That's not enough. You need to talk about why your family's in the situation that it's in, why being a doctor is important to you. Now, the reason I say 500 words, and again, like I said, may, you may think like, gosh, I just can't tell my story in 500 words. That's not enough. Um, and I mentioned this to Lily just right before we started the session. We have over 1,200 applications in the system right now. And that's after only having been live for two weeks. So the reviewers are going to do a lot of reading. They have to do a lot of scoring. Um, 500 words makes for a short, comfortably concise personal statement that can still pack a punch. But to write a statement of 1,000 words or 2,000 words, and I will tell you, readers are going to, reviewers are going to tune out. Um, even if you've just you know, written the sequel to War and Peace, that's a really good sequel. Um, so you want to keep your statement concise, powerful, to the point, so that we can read it and we can be wowed by it. When you're finished writing your personal statement, and I can't emphasize this enough, print it out, 
Hold it and stand in front of the mirror and read it to yourself out loud as if you were delivering a speech in a communications class. And have you taken, how many of you have taken a public speaking course since you've been at PCC? You know the power of receiving a speech de delivered to you in a way that is open and persuasive. So to print your personal statement and then read it as though it were a speech is really important. Um, and then the second thing that's really good is to get a second opinion. Um, talk to a professor, talk to your best friend, talk to a parent, another family member, somebody that you know is a really, really good student and you respect them because they're a good writer. Pass this personal statement around and get feedback on what's wor what works, what doesn't work, is there a particular sentence that's stronger than another, and, and get feedback and then go back, do your second draft, and get ready to submit that. The cool thing about scholarships is that this is basically free money. You never have to pay a scholarship back. It's not a grant. It's not a loan. Um, it's not money from the government. It is money from our donors who want students to have funds to pay for their educational experiences. And scholarship winners, even if you didn't have a high GPA to get your scholarship, it's still something that you earned for your academic prowess and your leadership ability and your student savvy. Um, so, you, if, so if you are awarded a scholarship, you still want to make sure that as many people as possible know about you receiving that scholarship because it gives additional authenticity to your college career. Employers want to know about these things, and those of you who plan to transfer and go to a four-year institution, they want to know if you are a scholarship recipient. Most scholarships can be used to pay for just about any college expense that you have. Students um, pay for their tuition, they will pay for their books. Some of them use scholarship money to pay rent or food, uh, transportation costs, uh, parking, bus pass, those types of things. So. Most scholarships don't have a limit on what you can use the money for. There are a couple here and there that we have in the foundation um, where the donors have put um, stipulations on how that money gets spent. But for the most part, once you have that cash in your hand, that's yours to do with what you want. We've been live since August 15th. Like I said, that's a short amount of time. Um, the scholarship application really is becoming part of the student culture. So students who are in the know know that they need to go to Academic Works to apply for Pasadena City College scholarship money. The applications are due October 3rd. That is a Friday. Um, the application will close at 11.59 p.m. on that Friday. So as long as you have everything in before the clock strikes midnight on Saturday morning, you're fine. Something that you'll notice is that there is a drafted status in your application and there is a submitted status in your application. There's a button that's going to say save and continue and then there's a button that says finish and submit. It's very important that you know that you have to press finish and submit before your application is considered a submitted application. Now, if you feel like you submitted your app but you really want to go back and play with your personal statements some more, you can do that all the way up until October 3rd at 11.59 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. So even though your application may say submitted, you can still go back and edit it as often as you want. And you should feel free to do that because we are not going to start reading applications until Monday, October 6th. The review period is two weeks. It's the week of October 6th the week of October 13th, and we'll wrap up on October 20th. And then the scholarship committee, which is comprised of members of the Pasadena City College Foundation Board of Directors, we sit around a table and we download all of the application data, all of the scores, and we will choose the recipients for each award that we give away. It is a daunting task, um, and I think we have about 30 or 31 opportunities that are alive right now. There's something else that I did not mention about this application that you should know, and that is that there are two ways you can connect with an opportunity in Academic Works. The general scholarship application is an auto-match feature, so you will be automatically matched and applied to scholarships that you qualify for. So to give you a little understanding of what qualifications are, some scholarships require that you already be in 24 credit units completed, um, that you're enrolled in six units. There are some scholarships that are just for nursing majors. There are some scholarships that are just for social science majors. So regardless of, of what those governing documents are, um, whatever you qualify for, you'll be auto-matched to. Also, when you are filling out your application, there's a tab at the top that says Opportunities. 
When you hover over opportunities, you'll see a couple things. You'll see, I think it's all recommended and external. There may not be any more external links that are live right now, but if you hover over recommended and you click on that, that will take you to any scholarship that requires additional information in order for you to qualify for it. And most of those are things like honors at entrance, presidents and board of trustees, and then we have two scholarships from the Asian Faculty Staff Association that require a different type of personal statement and they also require a resume. Um, the Robert Westerbeck Scholarship, which is our biggest pool of scholarship money, we have about $120,000 that we give away every fall. Um, and those scholarships are a minimum of $1,000 that opportunity requires letters of recommendation. Um, so when you're in the application and you're filling everything out, don't forget to hover over recommended and then take the extra time to fill out that application as well, particularly that Westerbeck because there will be, in essence, 100 or more students that will get money from that, that award um, this fall. We will notify you approximately November 4th if you are a recipient and you will get an email saying congratulations and then you will get a invitation to the party. And then our event is Wednesday, December 3rd. That is the week before finals, thank goodness, because we had it on the first day of finals last year and that was just a bad, bad mistake. Um, not doing that this year. And the Hilton is beautiful. You will love it. Um, there are handouts up here on the table that have the, um, the entire PowerPoint there. So you can take that with you if you need to refer back. I'm Chris McPeak, it's Chris with a K. I'm in the directory on campus and my office is right next to the president's office in the C building on the right side, 241. And um, I'm there most of the time. We're open from eight till 4.30. Can we give Chris McPeak a round of applause for oh. <laughs>